Hi, and welcome to another presentation from Your Business Tutor. Learning your way, anytime, anywhere. There are many different methods an organisation can use to grow in size externally. However, usually when describing these, we connect the description to the sector of industry that the two organisations join together are part of. So with that point made, let's introduce our first method of external growth, and that is horizontal integration. So what are we going to learn in this presentation? Well, first of all, we're going to find out what horizontal growth or integration is, and then we're going to explore the advantages and disadvantages of horizontal growth. So let's get started by asking, what is horizontal growth? Horizontal growth or integration occurs when two businesses at the same point in the chain of production or in the same sector of industry join together. For example, when two businesses from the primary sector join together using a merger or a takeover. Generally, horizontal growth will occur between two organisations which undertake the same activities. For example, if two crop farmers join together. However, if the horizontal integration is between two organisations which are connected but don't do the same thing, then this would be called horizontal lateral growth. For example, if a crop farmer were to join together with an animal farmer. Now that we've described what horizontal integration is, Let's now move on to look at the advantages of horizontal growth. One of the main reasons for horizontal integration is that it allows a business to take advantage of economies of scale. This is the situation where a larger business is able to make products at a lower cost per item than a smaller business. For example, a small business may be able to produce an item at a cost of one pound, whereas a large organisation can produce the exact same item at a cost of 80 pence. Obviously, this cost saving is important because if a business can make items more cheaply, it will make more profit. It is able to do this because large organisations can afford to employ specialist staff and can use modern technology which increases production. But also, they can purchase raw materials in bulk at a much lower cost. Another advantage of horizontal growth is that the enlarged business will have a larger market share and competition in the marketplace will be reduced as two competitors will have joined together. This not only helps to improve brand awareness amongst customers, but also helps to improve profitability. This is because a larger business will not only benefit from lower costs due to economies of scale, but will be able to charge a higher price as there is less competition in the marketplace. A third advantage of horizontal integration is it can protect the enlarged business against a takeover. For example, when two organisations join together, they become much larger in size, meaning to take them over would be very expensive. If, however, the two organisations were still separate, it might be quite easy for a larger business to purchase one of them because they would be quite cheap. A final advantage of horizontal growth is that it can let a business gain access to patented technology. When a business invents something, they are allowed to patent it, which means other organisations cannot use that technology for 20 years. Given this can provide an organisation with a huge advantage, sometimes a large business will purchase a smaller business that holds a patent so that it can access the technology and incorporate it into its own products. So let's now move on and ask what are the disadvantages 
of horizontal growth. As you'd expect with any type of external growth, one of the major disadvantages is the cost of purchasing another business. This problem is exacerbated further if the purchase is financed by borrowing money. This is because borrowing adds a lot of debt to the enlarged business. And this debt has to be paid back, meaning money is sucked out of the organisation, which would otherwise have been used for future investment. Another major problem with the horizontal integration is that when two organisations in the same market join together, it can result in reduced competition and the enlarged business having too much market power. The government often do not like this because when competition is reduced, customers usually face higher prices and less choice. As a result, the government may insist that the enlarged business reduce in size by selling off branches or in a worst case scenario, don't allow the two organisations to join together. Another problem with horizontal growth is that culture clashes can occur when two businesses join together. If both organisations were run in completely different ways and then were joined together, this may cause major problems. If staff in the two organisations do not cooperate with each other or try to undermine the new business, the organisation will suffer. This situation is exacerbated further as the joining together of two businesses usually means that some staff will lose their jobs or have their roles altered. Obviously the fear of job losses or at the very least a change in job can make staff uncooperative when it comes to supporting the two businesses joining together. As can be seen, when two organisations join together, it can be challenging in terms of culture clashes. But equally, sometimes an enlarged business becomes too big to manage effectively. When this happens, diseconomies of scale occur. This is a major problem, as diseconomies of scale can result in an organisation suffering from slow decision making and being unable to react to change quickly in the marketplace. In fact, all this results in the organisation's cost of production rising hugely, which can lower profits. A final issue with growing in size is that a business doesn't always get what it is expecting. Sometimes when one business buys another, it finds out after purchasing it something that it didn't know beforehand. For example, it may find out that a business has a lot of old, out-of-date inventory that is worth nothing, or that it has lots of customers who are due it money, but that are unlikely to pay. Both these situations would end up costing the purchasing business a lot of money. In fact, if the purchasing business had known about these problems before the purchase, they may not have bought the business or would have paid a much lower price. So what did we learn in this presentation? Well, first of all, we found out what horizontal growth or integration is, and then we went on to find out about the advantages and disadvantages of horizontal growth. As you might expect, Horizontal integration is a popular form of external growth as it involves joining together with another business that does similar things. However, as beneficial as this can be, sometimes organisations believe that rather than combining with a competitor in the same industry, that it might be better to combine with a supplier or a business they sell their products to. So with that, let's move on to our next presentation in this series and look at vertical growth.